So we are looking at integration at an advanced level, of course. In first year, you did integration of this kind. Find one, the integral of x to the power n dx. And the answer was x n plus one over n plus one. <clears throat> you also did the integral of sine ax dx and the answer was negative cos ax over a, of course we are adding constants. In the same first year, there's an integral of cos ax dx and the answer of sine ax over a plus c. Our summing came up in first year. When does first integrating the inverse functions? You also went as far as differentiating so many functions. So in this course, I think the interest is not necessarily these because these you already have them. So this course, our interest maybe is to do not extended power rule, but we'll start from substitution and then by parts, a reduction, trig substitution, hyperbolic uh, sines and cosines. So that we enjoy the course. So when you still have the energy, let's start with reduction. So for us to do reduction, we'll start with by parts. So we are looking at methods, methods of integration. The first one, we look at by parts. We know that to integrate by parts, if you're integrating u multiplied by dv, you get, this one again is just a bonus, you get uv minus the integral of v and then du. That's a by parts there. So here we'll do one, integrate one, x squared, sin x dx to e to the power x cos x dx. And then three, integrate x and then x dx. 
very good combination. So we start with the first one. How do you use by parts? You choose you that when you differentiate and combine with the integral of dv, that integral inside. So the secret is. So I'll choose u because as you can see here there will be u dv. So between these two, one must be u, one must be dv. Now you choose a u that when you differentiate and put here, and choose a dv that when you integrate and put here, this integral is going to be simpler than this one. Then you know you're doing something. If you look at question one, we are able to easily differentiate x squared. We can also easily differentiate sine x. We can easily integrate x squared. We can also easily integrate sine x. But the question is, which one makes the inner integral simpler? If you say let dv, be equal to x squared. When you integrate this, v is going to be x3 over 3. The power will become bigger. So we'll have issues there. We won't be doing anything because of the nature of sine function. So let u to be x squared. So that when we differentiate, uh, the power reduces. We have 2x dx. Then we'll let dv to be sine x at dx. So that when we integrate to get v, we'll have negative cos x. Who we'll have negative cos x. Okay. So <clears throat> this means that the integral x squared sine x dx has now become uv, which is negative x squared uh, cos x minus, according to the formula, the integral of v, which is minus, so that minus, uh, okay, let me write it first. So I have minus cos x multiplied by du, which is 2x dx. So this is negative x squared uh, cos x plus, because I have minus, minus, and then I'll pull the two outside, then I'll remain with x uh, cos x dx. For sure, the inner integral is less complicated as compared to the outer one. So now we can, uh, as well here, used by parts. So we'll let you, for that part, be x and differentiate it to one dx. And dv b cos x dx and integrate to get sine x. So that integral of x cos x dx is equal to x sine x when I do this one, and then I do uh, this one. That would be minus the integral of sine x 
multiplied by one dx. This whole thing is just x sine x minus the integral of sine x is minus cos x. So that all together here we get x uh, cos x plus, I mean x sine x, x sine x plus cos x plus c. So then we come and substitute it here because this is the integral of x uh, cos x dx. So we substitute, this now becomes a negative x squared uh, cos x plus two open x sine x uh, plus cos x. And then the c can stand alone. So we have negative x squared cos x plus two x sine x plus cos x plus c. This is the integral using by parts. Very, very nice. Oh yeah, two cos x. Good. So we expand, we get two cos x. So let's go to ex cos x and see how it comes out. Ex cos x and see how it comes out. Two ex cos x dx. Now these two, <laughs> these two, nothing changes. Sine has the same behavior of ex because it does not vanish. The other one, it was easy for us to, to choose because uh, x squared, x to the power n, as you keep differentiating, the power keeps going down until it becomes a constant, just as we can see here, it became one. But uh, where did it become one? Here it became one. But look at the ex. No matter how many times you differentiate ex, it will still be ex. You try cos x, you differentiate, becomes sine, becomes cos, sine, cos, sine, cos, sine. But the good part is that to make a good choice here again, you let u to be equal to cos x and then dv to be equal to ex dx. <coughs> this is because I observed that in the most papers that we mark, the students who take cos x to be dv, they make mistakes when it comes to signs these negatives here. When I integrate sine, I need negative cos. When I integrate cos, it just comes out as sine. So I feel the, uh, most students find it easy when differentiating cos and remembering that its derivative is negative sine, than remembering that the integral of sine is negative cos. So for that reason, we make u to be cos so that when we differentiate, we are getting sine x dx. When we integrate dv, this one remains ex. 
So now we have e x uh, cos x the x so this is negative the x is equal to uv which is e x uh, cos x and then minus the integral of e x negative sine x dx like that Yeah, it's also okay to use the other way around. <laughs> EX cos X plus the integral of EX sine X DX. We are doing this because of the signs there. Negative, negative. Then now we integrate our EX sine X dx alone so let u uh, to be sine x and dv uh, to be ex dx we integrate dv we'll get ex we differentiate u we'll get cos x then we put together we we'll have ex sine x dx is equal to uv that is ex sine x minus v du that is ex cos x dx so we substitute now this one here so here we we'll get ex cos x this is the integral of ex cos x dx plus here we are getting ex sin x and then minus the integral of ex cos x dx. But this one here is what we have on the left. And the beauty is that it is negative. So we'll take it the other side so that we have two of them as we add them. Cos x dx giving us ex cos x plus ex sine x. Then we divide by two, we divide by two. So now we have the integral that we're looking for, ex cos x dx is equal to ex cos x plus ex sine x over two plus the constant c. Okay, so this is also the first year question. And let's do the third one. The integral of x, I mean x, the x. The choice here is not difficult because we are limited. You only let you to be in x and dv uh, to be x dx. For a simple reason that if you try to let dv to be in x, to integrate it, you need by parts again. So to differentiate u, I uh, will get one over x dx. And to integrate v, we get x squared over two. So we are saying x, the next, at the x is equal to uv 
which is x squared over two, then x minus, I'll put half outside deliberately, and then v x squared du this guy. So this is x squared over two, then x minus half the integral of x at dx. Then we integrate uh, x squared. So I mean x. So we get x squared over two. That is a two down. So it becomes four. And then we add a c. That's how easy it is. Easy. It is. So what could happen if we're just looking at the integral of the next? Yes. Suppose you made a mistake and let the V to be the next. How do you survive? Mm -hmm. Be, but it to me, sir, dx would be u. Let u be equal to dx. So in this case, you let u to be one. <laughs> so we let u to be the next again. And then dv is what becomes dx. Because oh, we always we, if if we if we make it div if we let's say dv is the next then you're not doing anything. It means you can go and answer the question direct. Because that's the whole question. Integrate the next. So if we let it to be dv, we integrate it, it means you have found the solution. So then we go to du. We differentiate here. We get one over x dx. We integrate dv. We we'll get x. <clears throat> because that's just one there, yeah? one dx. So we get x. So we are saying the integral of lin x at dx is equal to uv, which is x and the next. Uh, yeah, same as tan x. Do the same as, and then minus the integral of x, which is v, and then du, like that, so that you get x, the next minus the integral of one dx, which is just x, the next minus x plus c. Wow, it looks like it's very nice integrating the next. Once you understand this pattern of bipartisan. Now, since it's nice, are we able then to answer integrate the next uh, to any power? Can we do this and get to the solution. So to answer this question, no matter how big any is, we need deduction formula. Because we know uh, with reduction, it can show us a, a certain pattern that you're able to just plug in the number and then keep going down, keep going down, never to get the solution. We also get back and look at the combination of, of uh, the combination of x. What if we put x to the power n and fix sign? What happens? Okay. So 
we now get into the Torah sheet and answer this question. This question is there in the Torah sheet. This one. The integral of the next to the power n. Yes. So let's see how we do things here. Yeah. And then in the Torah sheet, you're also asked to answer, after you have found the reduction formula, are you then able to answer the integral when n is equal to four? And it's written like this. Uh, when n is equal to four. So let's see what happens. So here we are calling it question five. We want to find when i n, uh, which is the integral of lin x, power n <clears throat> dx. So the whole reduction formula depends on by parts. Because it's by parts, except that you have to do by parts so many times. Then now reduction makes it very, very easy because it just gives you a pattern of how things will be happening so that you can only do that once and then you start plugging numbers. So in this case, we've already seen that we cannot let Linux to be um, to be DV because we can't easily integrate it. If we are able, then we could have gone there and integrated it here. So because we are unable, you let this, you let u to be in x uh, to the power n and let dv to be one dx. So v is going to be x, then du is going to be n lean x n minus one. That's how we uh, that's how we differentiate using chain rule because there's a function inside and some power outside. So the power drops, then the function fixed, then the power are reduced by one, then multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of lean x is just one over x. So we are saying, okay, then the integral when we still have n is going to be vx from by parts, which is x uh, lean x uh, to the power n minus v du. So v du, uh, our v is x, and then we have one over x, and then n, oh, let me not change anything so that no one is left behind me. Well, this is very, very crucial. So I write the way it is. We multiply by n and in x, n minus one, one over x. Close dx. If we write this, this is x and in x, n minus this x here and this x will cancel. And then any can be put outside because that's a constant. Then we'll have lean x, any minus one dx. So once the power n reduces, then you know you have found the reduction formula. So the reduction formula here is actually the integral when I have n is going to be x lean x n minus n. Look at the inside integral. This question is named after the power. Everything else is fixed. So if you look at the initial question, Lean x is there, dx is there, the integral itself is there. The only thing that has changed is n. We now have n minus one. So placing it here, we are saying this is the integral at n minus one. Then now we can start bringing n number. Can we find the integral when we have four? At four, you just substitute in here. So n is equal to four. 
So we have x, lin x, when n is four, you place four there, minus four, and then the integral at four minus one, four minus one is three, the integral at three. This is x, lin x, four minus four, open. We're now dealing with the integral three, so it's no longer four now, it's three. So you have x, lean x, power three, minus three, the integral at two is no longer three now, we have two, it has reduced. So it keeps reducing x, lean x, power four minus four. Um, so maybe to avoid making mistakes, we expand here. So we'll have four X, lean X three plus 12, the integral when N is two. So now we place that integral. So we'll have X, uh, lean X four minus four X, uh, lean x three plus 12, open, any is now two. So we are substituting in here. So we have x, lean x, two minus two, the integral, two minus one, we get one. We expand, so this is x, and in x power four minus four x, lean x power three plus twelve x, and in x power two minus two. We open n is now one, so we have x lean x power one minus one, the integral at zero, now the integral at zero, then there'll be nothing. So we say, okay, let's see, the integral, uh, uh, I'm not changing this, I want to put i zero. So we're now dealing with i zero. Then we close. <laughs> So we have used I zero. So when it's I zero, then we are saying X and in X power four minus four X in X power three plus 12 X and in X power two minus Uh, so this is um so this two here becomes 24 because of the 12 we suppose multiply by two so we have 24 x lean x then minus 24 by 24 uh, uh, i mean minus 24 by negative one we get plus 24 then we get back to here and substitute so we have x lean x to the power zero. So that is just one. So it means we'll only end at x. So we just place x there. So 24x and then zero multiplied by anything just becomes zero. So we just add a c. So that's how we find this particular one. But the key is having the initial reduction formula because he can change the number for there. You can even put the simple ones. Say, okay, find I3. Find the integral two. As soon as if we go to the previous one, we are looking at the integral of lin x, is it? Lin x dx. So if we knew the reduction formula, the power here was just one. So you come straight here and substitute. So you say, since I have one, I'll have x 
the next to the power one minus one, the integral one minus one, that is zero. That is going to be X, the next minus, again, when N is zero, you substitute. So you get X, the next power zero minus zero multiplied by I negative one. But because of zero, everything disappears here. So you just have X, the next minus X plus C. Uh, let's see if this is what we got the other side. Exactly what we got. We got x the next minus x plus c. And we have x the next minus x plus c. Very, very interesting. Uh -huh. ah. <clears throat> so on the question for reduction, I think we still have three questions. So what we do is the meeting will be cutting very soon. So maybe we can practice a bit. We do this one as a simple task. Find, and maybe we just stick to the same one we're doing. But now we say, find I6. Let's see if we can find I6. I6. And maybe, yeah, let's see how I6 will come out. <sighs> and then we we'll compare the solutions. It should be longer than this one. Well, this was I4. So I4 had one, two, three, four, five pieces. I think I6 will have seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. So we are putting down for, and uh, this is not much weight. So just for 10 minutes. So this is. Uh, this is 2018, so we're joining at 2028. So I just take a 10 minutes break to allow the meeting to record as I put down a bit. So we're finding R6 of the same. So the integral of the next to the passes. 